The midpoint method tends to be kind of confusing in your first microecon class. I'm a microeconomics tutor, and this is what you actually need to know about it. You're gonna be given essentially two coordinates of price and quantity to compare. We've got P1, Q1, P2, Q2 here. Given these coordinates here, we're gonna plug them into equations for the percent change in quantity and the percent change in price to calculate elasticity. This is no different than what we've been doing with price elasticity of demand and supply. The difference here is that we're gonna base that percent change on the average, not initial value of the change from one to two here. Let's start here by calculating that percent change in quantity to understand what this actually means. Normally when you're calculating percent change, it's new minus old divided by new. But here we're doing new minus old divided by the average of new and old. This is what's different about the midpoint method, and it's what makes it more accurate because we can have massive shifts between quantity and price here. And so we're calculating the average here to essentially negate changes in scale in price and quantity and thus get a more accurate elasticity calculation. When we plug in the Q2 and Q1 values up here and solve, we get negative 0.86, which we'll plug in right up here. In other words, our percent change from Q1 to Q2, basing it off of the average of these two values is negative 86%. Now let's do this, but for price. We've now got P2 and P1, so let's plug in the values from up here. And when we solve, we get this final value here, which I'll plug in up here. And in other words, means that the percent change in price when we're comparing the base to the average of these price values is plus 18%. Now from here, we can calculate the elasticity by dividing these two values, resulting in negative 4.78. Translate it into simple terms here. When this good, whatever we're working with here, experiences a plus 1% increase in price, it's met with a negative 4.78% decrease in quantity. All right, that was a lot right there, but that's the midpoint method and the biggest takeaway Remember, we calculate, look at the denominator right here. We're comparing the new minus old prices or quantities to the average of the new and old price or quantity. It gives us a more accurate read on the true percent change in price or quantity, not as heavily considering scale differences between price and quantity. And you'll know you need to use the midpoint method to solve if the problem's given you a new and old price value and a new and old quantity value. If you're still watching right here and want me to just explain the rest of your microeconomics class to you, go check out my microeconomics cram kit. All 95 of my concept breakdowns, just step-by-step step walking you through what you need to know for this class, take about two hours to get through. And it's completely free access to you, available whenever you need it. So go check out my site, link in bio.